what type of surgery do we do for ovarian cancer? Yeah, I mean, this is, um, you know, like you mentioned, most ovarian cancer, regardless of the type, is usually going to require some kind of surgery. When I think about um, patients that I treat in counsel, I often think about, so what are our toolkits? Our main major toolkits that, that we have in our toolkit are surgery and chemotherapy. I kind of put some of the things that you mentioned, which are the immunotherapy or the targeted therapies, like in the group of sort of some type of treatment that we can give to you either by IV or by mouth in one lump and then the surgery in another lump essentially. And so with surgery, um, obviously our first goal is to, you know, sometimes get a diagnosis. So sometimes that can be through sort of a, a laparoscopic surgery, which uses sort of like small incisions and a camera to just take some samples or biopsies, as you mentioned, or that could be a larger surgery where we actually do more than just take a look around and we actually, you know, make a, make an incision or make a cut where we actually make a bigger incision and take out any tumor that we see. So it kind of varies. That's kind of the role of like thinking about, are you using this for diagnosis or are you starting to use this for part of your treatment? The larger surgeries are often sometimes termed debulking, or debulking surgeries, or sometimes more technically cytoreductive surgeries. So cyto means cell, reductive means reduce. And so the idea of reducing any of the tumor that's in the body, and obviously our goal to remove as much of the tumor and all of it if possible. So patients we know have a better outlook if the tumor that's left inside after the surgery at the end of the surgery is no greater than one centimeter. And people often ask, well, why do you end up having to leave tumors? And sometimes it's due to how ovarian cancer can spread, which can be almost like little, even like grains of rice along the surfaces, or sometimes even like little like gumdrop areas. Some of those we can take out, but sometimes we have these little very small, small areas that we will have to rely on chemotherapy for. Now, the surgery that is in place there may actually really range in that it may be very extensive or it could be a little bit more limited. And that again will depend on, is this something that's an early stage where we may be able to preserve the ovary on the other side, especially if somebody is young, for example, with ovarian germ cell tumors, these are the tumors that start in egg cells and can sometimes happen in younger women. These are often treated by you, say, you taking out just one ovary, perhaps. If the person's done with childbearing, we may take out the other, the uterus, or if they're completely done with everything, we may take out both ovaries. It really kind of depends on what, what the clinical situation is. Other tumors may you know, depend on if we know that there's a lot of tumor there, we may have done chemotherapy first and then we're doing sex surgery. That is sometimes called a term that's called neoadjuvant or before surgery, before surgery, we do chemo and then we do an interval surgery where we take out the tumor that we find. Those surgeries can be very extensive and sometimes people can have long stays in the hospital that can be anywhere between three and seven days. Surgeries may be extensive because they could include removing other organs that are not really associated with the ovary. So if there's a cancer that's spread to the, to the bowel or to the spleen or to the liver or to the diaphragm, which is sort of the upper surface of the abdominal cavity, there's a lot of like range in how extensive a surgery could be. And that's part of the reason that we feel really strongly about women seeing somebody who's trained. GYN oncologists are, are people who we've spent, um, you know, three to four years after our general OBGYN residency training in complex surgery for ovarian cancer. And so that's why not only do we have an understanding of what happens surgically and how to treat that, but we also have the understanding of the chemotherapy. So if you don't live near a GYN oncologist, often we partner with um, a local medical oncologist who sees patients. And I have a lot of, you know, I'm sure we all do have partners with that as well. So it's not that you have to be right next to somebody, but having them as part of your team will be really important.